Greetings and welcome back to another episode of Excalibur CCG TV's Talking Comics. Uh, I am Randy. I am Mark. He is Mark. We are the guys that present to you every week the books that are going to be coming out be on the shelves Wednesday morning for you. The Wednesday we're talking about this time is September 6, 2017. We are now entering into the last quarter of the year, so I'm hoping it's going to be a good year for comics. Uh, good last quarter Hopefully. for comics. Who knows? So I found some really good ones so far this uh, this year. So far, so so thumbs up to that. Um, remember, we are in two locations here. We're in Shreveport. We are in Texarkana. You can find go to our website uh, excaliburccg.com. You can find the phone numbers and you can find the directions to get to either shop if you have not been here before. We do have people that stop in all the time from out of town to uh, say hey, to look around the shop. So uh, we want you to know you don't, you know, have to to just hey ask us. You can go look on the website; it's there. It's also on Facebook. Yes, it is. <clears throat> so uh, beyond that, we are going to just dive right into the number ones that we have. We've got a lot of them, and uh, I think thankfully for a lot of people, a lot of these are mini series. So yeah. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I always, questions I always get. Is this something that's going to be an ongoing, or is this something that I can give a small time commitment to? So, miniseries seem to be what a lot of people enjoy. Short story, very concise, and done where they can move on to the next book. Right. <clears throat> so, I'll let you start, Mark. Alright, well, um, first from Xenoscope Entertainment. Who do they, Xenoscope? There's is, uh, uh, Grimm's Fairy Grimm's Tales. Grimm's Fairy Tales people. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Black Sable, number one, of six, um, written by Joe Brucia, and no credit for the artist. Maybe he's the artist, too, I don't know. I don't know, but we have Tom Sterling <coughs> doing, Tom the, doing the cover. Okay. Well, this is uh, set 100 years in the future, uh, in the Age of Pirates. I guess this is the second Age of Pirates. Yeah. His return, as man... I don't want to be a pirate! <laughs> has returned as mankind reaches out for the stars... Schooners have been replaced by starships, and these pirates wield space-age weaponry. But they are as bloodthirsty and ruthless as their predecessors were centuries before them. Experience a new universe of swashbuckling action and adventure in the vast reaches of space. Sounds like Joe Brucio was a fan of uh, the uh, outlaws and their... Uh their song that they had where, you know, Johnny Cash sings a bit about the Highwaymen. Oh, yeah, the, the Highwaymen. Yeah, the Highwaymen. Yeah. That's what it is, uh, the Highwaymen. Well, the, yeah, they... Yeah. Because eventually he was the, the pirate of those That's right. skies there. So. He was, after he fell off the dam. After he fell off the dam. <laughs> It'll be Into a single drop of rain. Again and again and, and again, again and again and again. Okay, uh, this one will excite a lot of people uh, because it's a tale of two marguerites, uh, or told by two marguerites. Uh, DC Comics brings us Bombshells United, the new ongoing Bombshell series. Uh, the DC Bombshells has ended. We have Marguerite Bennett writing and Marguerite Sauvage uh, drawing. And then you can drink a margarita while you read it. You can drink a margarita. Uh, and have a margarita pizza. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. That's the whole experience. That's everything. And you this, can die. And yeah, happy. And, and I'll, I'll just tell you guys right now with the Savage name, I'm, I've, I guess, picked every single comic that has very odd names. So I'm going to slaughter a whole lot of names. I apologize right now for that. Uh, this cool one, the year is 1943, and Wonder Woman is going to travel to Arizona because she has been asked to help, uh, help by these two young girls, Cassie Sandmark and Donna Troy. The help that they need is that their families are being uh, displaced and put into internment camps. So now Wonder Woman is going to make a stand, try and help these girls. So I guess there's been some wrongful moving around of stuff as there was uh, during the time there. Um, and it pits her directly against the country that she has fought for so far in the war. So we'll see what happens uh, as far as that goes. But if you enjoyed the first series, I guess there's going to be a little bit of difference here because I, I, I think Bennett wrote the first one, but I don't think Savage was an uh, artist on board. Okay. Uh, well, the next one for me is also from DC. It's uh, Dastardly and Muttley. 
number one of six. This one's not just a one shot. This is a mini series yeah. from uh, Garth Ennis Big and uh, Morissette. Morissette? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Morrissey. Morrissey. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it'll be very depressing. <laughs> very depressing. <laughs> I don't want to read this. <laughs> Just get more depressed as you go through. Right. <laughs> it's a red letter day for the good folk of Unliquistan as they start to power up for their first retom atomic reactor. But after pushing the wrong button, the ultra rare radioactive element Unstabilium has been released into the atmosphere. Yum. Now it's up to pilot Lieutenant Colonel Richard Dick Etchardley and his navigator Captain Dudley Mutt Muller to save the day. Will they safely complete their mission or are things about to get a little wacky? Who knows? This is uh, can't be any more wacky than that. One of my so favorite uh, cartoons there. I always yeah. liked Etchardley and Muttley. Next up, uh, we have, from Marvel Comics, Generations, Iron Man, and Iron Heart. Uh, this one's already been getting a little bit of controversy online. We've got Brian Michael Bendis writing, and we've got Marco Rubio drawing. Uh, like drawing. The governor? Yes. Okay. No. The what is he, the governor, senator? He's something. But, uh, I say Rubio. Ruby. Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you for correcting me that. Uh, with that. We've got uh, Riri Williams. She is teaming up with a Tony Stark from the past, only this Tony Stark from the past is a Sorcerer Supreme. So I don't know exactly what time period that was happening. Um, that, it's nothing that sounds too familiar to me. But that's about all the information they feel like telling us. So we'll get to figure out what happens beyond. Uh, maybe. With that. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> And we all know the reason now why you have these two versions of the people uh, running into each other because of Secret Empire. And, spoiler alert, Secret Empire Omega is not coming out this week. No, it's that's a shock. <laughs> I thought they were going that's to try shock. and wrap it it's up. It's got to be next week. Yeah. Or a week after, I guess. This week, next week. No, we're, we're next week now. Yes. We are next week now. We are in the future. Yeah, we're in the future and we're trying to look further into the future. Exactly. Woo. It's dangerous stuff. I don't recommend it. <laughs> Kingsman Red Diamond number one of six from Image Comics. Uh, this is by Rob Williams, Simon Fraser, with uh, Frank Quitely doing the cover art. Um, Kingsman The Golden Circle is in cinemas this September and we're launching the sequel to the hit comic book series by Mark Millar and Dave Gibbons with Kingsman the Red Diamond. Working class super spy Eggsy follows in his mentor's footsteps but is still rough around the edges for a Kingsman agent. Rejected by his high school crush and hot on the heels of a rescue mission to save Prince Philip, he embarks on an international terror plot in a story that starts where James Bond draws the line. Okay. Um, yes. That's it. So it looks like they have a creative team that hopefully will put the book out on time because <laughs> Miller has such a hard issue or a hard time with that with his uh, Crohn's. Was it Crohn's. So yeah. could be good. Hopefully, uh, we'll we'll pick up Angela. We we saw the movie. We really liked the movie. She went and she read the comic. She was not as impressed with the comic as she was with the movie. So, okay. uh, I've seen, I, I, I have not seen the movie and I have not read the comic. <laughs> so you have no say so on that. No. I really enjoyed the movie. It was fun. Um, here's here's a neat one for me. Uh, Oni Press. We don't give you many Oni Press titles here. Uh, That's true. Made Men Number One. Paul Tobin is writing it. Uh, Arjuna Susini. He sounds French from the videos I could see, but I could not find somebody wanting to say his name. Uh, and it gets even better, because the character's name is Jute <laughs> Shelley. <laughs> J-U-T-T-E. Jute Shelley. Jute. Jute. Uh, she is a Frankenstein. She's also a Shelley, but she's also a Frankenstein. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, she was also, at, at, at the current time of the story, or the start of the story, a Detroit Special Ops officer. However, her unit was sent into a routine call and were ambushed and one by one taken out. Only the problem for the people who took everybody out 
she happens to be a Frankenstein. She has a secret. There's something more to her. So uh, it's going to help with her revenge. And there's a gang she's getting back together. I'm guessing that there's there's more Frankensteins out there that will be, or maybe Wolfman or Wolfman, Phantoms of the Opera, or, or Shelley's. I don't or know. Shelley's I don't know. Or Whatever. There's something. But sounds like a neat concept. Legosi. I, I, it doesn't say ongoing or miniseries, so I would assume ongoing until it's made a miniseries <laughs> or called. That's a pretty good assumption these days. Yeah. Um, from Titan Comics, uh, another adaption of the girl who played with fire. Um, this is number one of two um, by Sylvain Runeberg and Manuel Gonzalez. With cover art by Claudia S.G. Yep, we're going to stop there. <laughs> we're going to stop there. Cello's part of the name. Yeah. Piani Cello. Piani Cello. Piani Cello. Sure. Okay, well, the Millennium Saga continues with the girl who played with fire. The second chapter in Stieg Larsson's best-selling novel series. In this exciting comics adaption, anarchist hacker... Lisbeth Salanda finds herself on the run after being accused of a triple murder and only renowned journalist Mikhail Blomqvist has the skills to help clear her name. This was all in caps and I did not yell at you. <laughs> so be grateful. I did must, not read it like it's written here. It must have been translated from like German or something where it always sounds like they're yelling. <laughs> we had, we had a, a former worker at a former place who, who once... Uh, made a, a crude remark about these people because they were talking in German to each other and he's like uh, but it sounded like they were yelling I'm like they're they're not yelling they're like two good <laughs> friends talking and the thing that was great is like one of them's Kenyan and one of them's Italian talking German <laughs> talking to German, each other that's pretty cool <laughs> no one can snoop on the uh, conversation when there you're doing you know. that it's true at least uh, most people you know of. right most people but it also uh, puts other people off because uh, America <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I stole this one, I guess, from you, uh, you? because I, I think you were pretty excited about uh, Scales and Scoundrels, number one. Why? Because Sebastian Gurner, oh, yeah, who yeah, is yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah, shirtless, yeah. shirtless bear fighter, bear is, <laughs> oh, I'm not a bear of any sort. <laughs> <laughs> I just got used to doing that with Chris. Hunter. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Image Comics uh, is, I guess, uh, Gurner's home for his comics uh, for the future here. And it's written by Galad. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of A's in his name. <laughs> Galad. <laughs> they forgot all the consonants. <laughs> That's right. Uh, this is a land of uh, magic and mystery, and the main character's name is Luvander. Uh, this is a week for names. <laughs> it really is. Lu Luvender is is tired of being penniless, being poor, and she decides to go on an adventure in which she is looking for the famed, uh, I say famed, fabled, you know, legendary, does it exist dungeon, the Dragon's Maw. However, like Maw Mouth or Maw. Hey, Maw. <laughs> it well, I don't know. <laughs> is it that with mean? with uh. It, well, it's M.A.W., okay. but, but with uh, Sebastian riding, it well, yeah, could you be either. Never know. You yeah. don't know with his humor. This is true. Uh, so what was originally going to be just a, a quest to get rich quick uh, is going to quickly turn into a journey that is uh, all about destiny for Lavender. So, Sounds fun. Um, Real fun, and it's it's a very unique art style. It's kind of like Shirtless Bearfire has a unique art style. He brings in these different people to tell stories, and... It's not chicken scratch. I don't know if that makes any sense. There are some of these that really come off as very simple. And that, I don't know. This looks kind of deceptively simple. It's it's There's oh, a lot I'm more sure, to it. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more to that. Yeah. Um, a lot of good little fantasy adventures coming out these days. There are. I, I hope they don't. I hope it's not like the zombie thing of a few years ago where it just really waters everything down. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But because that's you know, like I said, one of my favorite uh, genres. Yeah. Right? Um, well, next up, I have a Star Wars book that's not from Marvel. Uh, from IDW, Star Wars Adventures Number One, by Kevin Scott and Derek Charm, introducing an exciting new era in all ages Star Wars comics. 
Each issue in this monthly series will feature two stories, starring your favorite Star Wars characters from all the films. This debut issue will reveal Rey's early adventures on Jakku, as well as a comical tale of clone catastrophe. Oh, uh, those wacky clones. Wacky clones. I don't know any clones in the uh, Star Wars films, because there have only been four films. Five if you count Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, yeah. <laughs> people, some people would agree with, or disagree with me. Oh, I don't know. A lot of people would probably agree. Um, Marvel is giving you one of the big uh, storylines that people have been excited for uh, here. They've they've given you the Edge of Venomverse. Now they are giving you Venomverse number one of five. This is written by a gentleman who is slowly taking, not slowly, very quickly trying to take over the comic book industry. Please tell me it's not Colin Bunn. Colin Bunn oh is, <laughs> is writing. And Ivan Coelho, uh, Coelho is, uh, Coelho, I don't know, is drawing. Colin Bunn, you need to stop. Colin, well, if it's good. I, I, I don't read everything from but I guess if it's good, keep going. Everything I've read from the dude has been good. So um, maybe keep going. It's kind of like Jeff Lemire. Lemire just <coughs> writes a lot but continues to write very high quality stuff. Uh, Venom finds himself t transported to a distant world and uh, while he is here, I guess he meets up with a ragtag group of other Venom, Venomized heroes, but they uh, quickly discover that there are uh, new species of characters or creatures out there that are called poisons, and the poisons hunt venoms. So, if any of these uh, venomized characters want to get back to their world safely, they're going to have to work together, not eat or kill each other, and whatever else. Someone needs to bring some chocolate. Because back in the day, there was, uh, 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 they made venom, apparently, chocolate had the same satiating effect. As eating really? brains, and so he was kind of chocolate brains, okay. hero wish because now he could just eat chocolate. Wow! Yeah, that Venom the Hunted had that. I mean, um, I, I'm not a Venom fan. Or so no, the, it yeah. may have been the hunger. <laughs> it may have been the Venom hunger. And a Snickers bar, Venom. <laughs> That's right. It, it helps everybody from becoming like terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say that, but Richard, uh, what's his name, uh, was pretty is a pretty funny uh, comedian uh, from Men in Tights, where he had the mole keeping him around. Richard, uh, oh Richard J. No, not Richard J. Uh, Richard. Um, I I love him. He's hilarious. Yeah, he is. He hasn't done anything in forever, but no, he's funny. He, hasn't. he was always dressed in black. Um, we'll think of his name. Yeah, eventually, next time. Uh, also connected with that is uh, Venomverse War Stories number one. Written by Colin Bunn? No, oh. not this one. <laughs> this is written by Declan Shalvey and Wait. Various. I thought he was an artist. I, well, I guess it's another artist dipping their toe into the writing pool. Um, Anna Paula Martello and Various. Various is doing a lot of stuff too for Marvel. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and cover arts uh, by Fran Francesco Martina. Yeah, apparently, Richard he's Lewis. One Lewis, yes. Not uh, the artist, the comedian. The comedian. Uh, Martina has been doing mm -hmm. a whole lot of covers. He's one of those hot artists right now. So okay. that's probably going to sell fairly quickly because of that cover. Yeah, we've been selling the Venomverse stuff pretty good. The Edge of Venomverse stuff has been doing all right. Uh, sure, you know about some of the adventures of all new Wolverine, Gwenpool, Ghost Rider, Old Man Logan, and Deadpool went on with their symbiotes, but what about the rest? Featuring a star studded lineup of creators and characters, including a venomized Punisher story written and drawn by Declan Shelby, so he's writing and drawing that one. Okay. And the awesome adventures of Venomized Rocket Raccoon by Magdalene Visaggio. We are really good. These are, man. The, the, okay. That's it. I'm yeah. done with that one. Okay, those, those are your number ones, guys. Number ones. Uh, a lot of them coming out. And like we said, a lot of them are just limited series, so that's that's good for everybody. Number one on here, and number one in your heart. Number one with a water bullet, gun with a water gun and a water, water bullet. bullet water bullet 
So uh, th those are number ones, and we've got a few other things we want to highlight. Uh, I'll start off. Uh, we've got Astonishing X-Men number three. Uh, the rotating artist this time is Ed McGinnis on art. So what if he rotates when he draws it? That would be kind of neat. So I guess as long, long as it's like... Is it like he rotates and when he comes back around he has to draw real quickly? Or, it's a big splash or, page. <laughs> it really well it probably helps that it's a splash page <laughs> if you're doing that. Uh, That's true. Drawing that way. Uh, with this one, Logan, uh, Old Man Logan. Logan, it, it, I, I guess we all know it's Old Man Logan by this point. He is trapped in the astral plane and uh, more so he is lost in the astral plane. And... Uh, as we told you a few videos ago that once in the astral plane you can easily get lost forever So he may be lost forever probably not what happens in the astral plane stays in the astral plane Maybe I don't know about that uh, Because that, that Dr. Strange is uh, always messing around in the astral plane and yeah. he's kind of a whore uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a family free video. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> family free. <laughs> We're open. <laughs> Six twenty. Lights uh, on. Lights, lights on. on. Lights on. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> so so he's he's trying to find his uh, teammates. So I, I guess they're in the astral plane as well. Still, I, I don't know. And he's trying to uh, steer clear of uh, Shadow King as well. So that's what's going on in that episode of Astonishing X Men. A Quinn Martin production. <laughs> All right, next up for me from uh, DC Comics is Batman number thirty, uh, written by Tom Clay Tom, Tom King, art with Clay Man, cover art Tim Sale, and probably another one because I think he just does the variants, right? Yeah, he does okay. the variants. <clears throat> the Ballad of Kite Man Part Two. In our second War of Jokes and Riddles interlude, it's oh. the making of a supervillain. He's been pushed by Batman to snitch on the Joker and cajoled by the Joker to betray Batman. Batman now? I don't cajoled. 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 The flunky who would be Kite Man finally snaps. He's lost everything, and a life of crime is the only way to go. Now, this is the dude that they kind of did the Charlie Brown joke thing with, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So now we're trying to... Make him a full-blown... Bad... Bad guy. <laughs> like, awesome bad guy. So now we're... we're oh, that's why. Variant edition. That's oh, okay. Him, so. Okay. So, uh, so now we're taking gotcha. and having an interlude to the whole Batman Joker thing? Apparently. Okay. How right long is that going to go? I didn't realize that that was the last time we said, but this is part two. Part two of it. Part um, two. Um, finally, we've got the uh, new DC bombshell statue. Everybody goes crazy over Harley Quinn, so this is Harley Quinn. Um, it's about the umpteenth, billionth, trillionth, cajillion. Harley Quinn statue. <laughs> They've done a lot. Yeah, there's we have a few. That we have we a have, few. There's a lot more we know. <laughs> the, yeah, because they've done a lot. So if you're a fan of Harley Quinn and this this is like the piece that is not in your collection and it wouldn't be in your collection because it hasn't come out yet, then nobody uh, has a house big enough for that <laughs> so, collection. Then you need to add this to your collection. Um, that is the comics that we have this week. Do we have a question? I actually I kind of think I thought of it. Of the one I was thinking of last week. Um, I would like to know, we would like to know, um, what was your very first comic? Do you remember the very first comic you bought? Wow. Um, was it a superhero? Was it horror? Was it a funny book? Like, you know, Casper or whatever? What was your very, very first comic book? Do you remember? Uh, I actually didn't buy my first comic. Uh, and, and I've told everybody I got started late. I uh, was a senior in high school and had like all these issues with um, bully pushed me over in the third grade, broke teeth, roots were dying, they all abscessed, mm. had a, a, a staph infection and stuff in the hospital my senior year in high school. Wow. And yeah, and my mom bought comics. She bought. Venom the Hunger, <laughs> number four. <laughs> she bought Uncanny X-Men 340, no, 339. 
she bought uh, an Archie comic of some sort. It was a digest size, and there was a fourth one that was bought. And I don't remember the fourth one, but the Uncanny X-Men one was the coolest one, and that's what kept me going with the comics. Okay. I don't remember the exact one it was that was I know that my very first comic I ever got my hands on was a sad sack comic because my dad bought it for me uh, probably from the base I remember reading sad sack and Richie Rich and Casper and then I moved on to Turok because it had dinosaurs on it I remember the very first Marvel book I ever got was Astonishing Tales number seven that was the very first one I bought myself mm. But um, Sad Sack was probably my first. I'm pretty sure that was, was my first. first, first, first comic. So there's there's quite a an obvious uh, gap there in times in which we started reading because Sad Sack was not being produced at the time no, where I started reading. Not comics, many of those. So. Not many of those kind of books were being produced anymore. Fun stuff, but yeah, not being produced <clears throat> at that time. Sad Sack, Sarge. I am old. No, Sarge was. Um, yeah, there was yeah. Sarge and Sad Sack. Yeah, yeah. Sad Sack and Sarge. Yeah, um, but there was also the Sarge from Beetle Bailey. Uh, right. That's the Sarge I'm more familiar with. Um, so that's a good question. Yeah, what? So let's reminisce. Walk down that memory lane. What was the first comic See, that you, you can, can remember? remember? Right. Be easier for some of you guys, <laughs> and it's that'll be funny if we get like, yeah, my first one was, um, you know. Batman number one from New 52. Uh, That's because, yeah, it's some people got into comics right, much later. Much later. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if it was like from last week. I mean, you know. That's what's crazy is it's been 20 <clears throat> years now since I started reading comics. So I don't even want to think about it. But yeah, it's been a very long time. So uh, answer the question, guys, in the, the comments below. Tell us what you're picking up this week, um, uh, what you're looking forward to, what you're liking, what, what you're not digging, you know. Right. All that stuff. Try not to harsh our mellow too much. Uh, but yeah, that's just uh, just talk. Talk. That will be fun. Uh, give us a thumbs up or a like uh, or subscribe or a share with friends, with family members, with uh, enemies. You know, enemies, inmates, uh, bunk mates, uh, anything. <laughs> We're getting into a weird territory here. In house, out house. Stung house. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever else there. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. I don't know why I'm going down that road, but I am. So we are uh, Randy and Mark from Excalibur Comics. Uh, go to our Facebook page. Uh, go to our website, ExcaliburCCG.com. Uh, take a look at what's coming out every week because this is just a small sampling of the books. Smattering, if you will. Uh, yes, I, I will. I will. This is a smattering of the books that will be coming out this week. Uh, and this is going to be a much larger week because this is the first week instead of a fifth week, which right. is a rarity uh, within the comic book world. So, until next time, guys, read great comics, and we will see you next week. Bye.